Adjustments. Time for adjustments. Say it to yourself two times. Time for adjustment has come, child of God. The time to make adjustment has come. The time is now. It is time to examine your life. Bring out and clean all the spots. Our Father is coming. He is on the way. When you turn left, you turn right, you look up, you look down, it is very glaring that it's time for adjustments. Adjustment is a change to achieve a desired outcome. Adjustment is a change to achieve a desired outcome. Child of God, what is your desired outcome? Where do you want to end, child of God? Where will you be when the trumpet sounds? Adjustment is a change to achieve a desired outcome. If your desired outcome is heaven, is inheriting his kingdom, the time to make adjustment is now. The time for adjustment has come. We can now confirm what Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says. To everything there is a, a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time for every purpose under heaven. Child of God, our Father Jesus first coming was to point us to the things that we must do if we desire to spend eternity with him. If we desire to make it with him. Look at me somebody. If your desired outcome is heaven. Is eternal life. The time. To take deeper look. And your Christian life is now. The time to take deeper appreciation of your Christian journey is now. May never come. The time is now. May we rise for his glory.
I want you to reflect on your Christian life. Look at yourself and look at your work with Jesus. Are you on the right path? Look at the child of God. Because when you identify where you are, as the Holy Spirit continues to uncover unto us, he will be able to help you out. Remember that not, there's nothing you can hide from him. Go deeper. It is time for adjustments. You cannot adjust what you have not recognized as an issue. You cannot adjust what you don't see as a problem. Time for adjustment. Tell him, Father, help me. Help me uncover all the things I need to adjust in my life. Help me, Lord. Help me through this message that at the end of the message I will take a retreat and sit and begin to make right all the things that are wrong. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness and your rest forever. In Jesus' name we have prayed. May we be seated. Luke chapter number 14, verse 33 to 34. Whoever of you does not forsake all that he has. Underline the word forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. If you cannot forsake all that you have, you cannot be his disciple. Remember, it's what? Whoever of you referring to you and me all of us here if you cannot forsake all you have if I cannot forsake all I have child of God are there some areas in your life that you need to forsake you need to let go you need to correct you need to adjust He has established it. That if you don't forsake all that you have, you can never be his disciple. The only condition to be his disciple and guarantee eternal life is to forsake all that you have. And that time to do that is now. Look at verse 34. It says, sword is good, but if the sword has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Sword is good. Sword is wonderful. But when sword has lost its flavor, how can it be seasoned? Are you that sword that has lost flavor? Are you that one that was very flaming yesterday? 
very committed in the things of the Lord. And today you are no more. And even when you are there, you are just pretending with others. Have you lost your flavor in the sight of God? Do you still have flavor in the eyes of God? The time to examine that is now. How is God seeing you, child of God? Is there still flavor? Or are you that sword in verse 35 that says, when the sword is without flavor, it is abandoned, it is thrown away, it is time for adjustments. If you are that sword that has lost flavor, you can regain flavor if you make adjustments. That's why he has blessed you with this message. So that you can be that sword that has flavor. So that you can make adjustment and be one of his. What is your take, child of God? Look at your Christian journey. How was it yesterday and how is it today? How was your prayer life yesterday and how is it today? How was your fasting life yesterday? How is it today? How was your life of meditation yesterday? How is it today, child of God? How is it today? How is it today? Are you still vibrant in the Lord? Are you still vibrant in the things of the Lord? Or have you been swept away by what is prevailing all over the world? The wind of the treasures of this world. The wind of the things of this world. Have you suddenly become a persecutor? Persecuting God's children? A gossip? When they pass, you say they have gone left. When they pass, they say they have gone right. Have you become the Judas Iscariot of this generation? Have you become the Jezebel? It is time to make adjustments. It is time to make the adjustment, child of God. Your life can regain flavor if you desire. Our Father is the same yesterday, the same today. The same forever. He is abundantly able to turn your situation around if you want him to. How many persons are involved in adjustments? Who is involved? Man is involved. God is involved. When man makes adjustments here, on earth, God establishes in heaven. When you make adjustment here, yeah, God also makes adjustments in heaven. He calls you by a new name. He turns your life into a new page. He's a faithful God. Forsaking all that you have. If you desire to be his disciple, let us look at First Kings chapter number 19. We'll begin looking at verse 14 through 21. I have been very zealous. For the Lord God of hosts. Because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. Turn down your altars. And kill all your prophets with a sword. And alone I'm left and they seek to take my life. 
Look at me. When we look at verse 14, who is giving that confession? Elijah. This is him now running away from the enemy alone. They have killed the others, and he alone escapes and is lamenting before God, before Yahweh. Verse 15. God bless you. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel and as king of over what? Syria. Look at me. Someone running away from enemies who have they have dealt with others. The enemies have destroyed others. And he escapes. Here he is before God. And God is telling him, you have to return. You have to return to the wilderness of Damascus. Look at me. And we see Elijah did what? He adjusted. Elijah made adjustments without delay. He returned to what? To the wilderness of Damascus. You have to anoint Hazel as king over Syria. You have to anoint Jehu as king over Israel. Let's see. And you have to anoint who? Is it Elijah? Elisha. As the one who will take over what? The mantle. In your place. We begin to see something outstanding in verse 17 and 18. Look at verse 17. It shall be that whosoever escaped the sword of Hazel, Jehu will do what? Answer me. Jehu will do what? Will kill. And whosoever escaped the sword of Jehu, what will happen? Elisha will kill. Look at. He had to make adjustments. Heaven also had to make adjustments and things to happen. These are the same enemies who were behind him. But God now has put a scheme, giving him directives, what he must do for the enemies to be there with. The first adjustment he made, he, ought, he had to return. And as he returned, the second he did what? Was to anoint those God said he should anoint. And you get a declaration of God. Whosoever escaped the sword of Hazel would not be able to escape the sword of Jehu. And whosoever escaped the sword of Jehu would not be able to escape the sword of who? Elisha. Now, God has put a scheme to do what? To fight for his son, Elijah. Why? Because he made adjustments. Instruction God gave to El Elijah. He has given our own instructions. He has given our own instruction. He has uncovered to us what we must do and what we must not do. And if we do what he says we should do, then he stands for us 24 on 24 times 7. We see Elijah, he made adjustments in line with God's instruction and we see the promises of God. Do we follow our own instructions? Do you keep to the instruction God has given you, child of God? Do you obey the steps God has put for you, has put for me? Do we follow those steps? You don't expect God to play his own role if you say no to his instructions. My sheep know my voice. They hear me and they follow me. He has given you instructions. 
He has given me instructions. Do we follow the instructions? It is time for adjustments. If we don't make adjustments, if we don't make adjustments, we should not expect eternal life. The change must take place. It is that change that is talking about achieving the desired outcome. It is our outcome. Are you see there? The Lord is good. Now, when we look over to verse 19, we begin to see something outstanding. Verse 19. And found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing, plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12. Then, then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. Immediately the mantle touched Elisha. He made adjustments. The first adjustment he did was to do what? He abandons what he was doing and followed Elijah and said, Please, let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow you. He instantly made adjustments. The first adjustment, he abandoned what he was doing. He knew that it was a call of God. He had to move. He abandoned and followed Elijah. The second, he had to plead with Elijah. Because he knew that he was not supposed to separate himself from Elijah anymore from that second. And if he must do that, he had to get permission. He pleaded with Elijah to go back and kiss his father and his mother. He only left Elijah on Elijah's approval. On Elijah's approval. That's when he left. And now when he left, he did something outstanding. He continued with the adjustments. He continued with the adjustments. And he said to him, go back again. For what have I done to you? That's what one. So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled them flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people. And they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Take note, he became his servants. He went back, took the oxen, prepared it and shared it. Look at me. That is Luke 14, 33. He says, if you don't forsake all that you have, you cannot be his disciple. And we see the application here with Elisha. Elisha has forsaken all that he had in order to follow Elijah. Elijah. He has let go. He prepared a meat and the oxen and share it. And then he followed. Now we see the condition being put into practice. He has let go. In other words, those things will prevent him from following Elisha. The things you have, those things you have that are taking you, taking your time. You don't have time anymore for God. It is time to forsake them. You get up in the morning, you read the Bible for five minutes, you pray for five minutes, you jump out, you come back in the evening, you read the Bible for five minutes, you pray for five minutes, you go to bed. How many hours do you spend for yourself and your family? How many hours do you spend for God a day? You cannot be his disciple unless you forsake all that you have, child of God. The time for adjustment is now. It 
if you forsake all those things then come and be my disciple come and follow me he has forsaken all these things this is him now following who elijah look at me this is somebody who was on his own but this is him now under the canopy of who a servant a servant that's what many persons don't want to hear today in this end time everyone wants to be a master nobody desires the portion of a servant he was on his own but this is him now he bowed to the position of a servant to Elijah look at me you may be that one that heard that voice that returned and you kept ignoring the voice and you are still ignoring the voice he said return home and you continue to ignore the voice I pray you make adjustments before tears of pain fill you. He told Elijah, return. Elijah adjusted, he returned. The Lord may be telling you, return back to me. Return back to your family. Return back to your congregation. Return, child of God. I pray you don't harden your hearts for tomorrow is very bitter. Elijah returned and today see how he has become an, an, an icon. An icon. This is Elisha. He abandoned everything and followed and took the position of a servant. This is him today. We are celebrating. See how God honored him. See how God lifted him. Why? Because he lifted the name of God higher. And God in return honored him. Do you want to be honored as El Elisha? As Elijah? The way out is to make adjustments. Is to forsake all that you have, not some all. He said, it's all, all. Tell your neighbor, all. Forsake all that you have and humble yourself. Be broken for the things of the Lord. Regain your portion of a servant. Let pride, arrogance, let these things disappear. And you are sure of eternal life. The Lord is good. And all the time. He's a faithful God. Are you that one that is very humble? Because according to you, there is no other alternative. Because according to you, you have not seen a better alternative. There are so many persons who are very regular in church, who are very humble today. Because, according to him, an opportunity has not come that way. When an opportunity comes by, that's when you see the real person. The real person comes out. And that's why God bless us with that message. Do you know the real you? Let someone just live now. 
going through the phone and see a message, please, I need you to come, there's a contract, and so on, for, 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 for uh, two million, come quickly, come quickly, and sign the contract. And you will see what the sister will do, or what the brother will do. You will see that message to wait. That service will wait. Are you there? The real person will come out. Are you that one? Are you that one that can be tossed by the things of this world at any time? At any time, child of God? Time to make adjustment is now. It's time for adjustments. It's time for adjustment, child of God. It's time to look at your life. And you clean all the spots. It's time. You are abandoning the call of God. Abandon the direction of God. It is time to make adjustments before it is too late. If you have been a pretender, it is time to make adjustments. I encourage you, child of God, to start the adjustment process right away before tears of pain locate you, before you waste your life in hell. Start the process right now. Tomorrow may be too late. In Luke 18, Luke chapter number 18, verse 18 through 30. Now a certain ruler asked him, asked who? Jesus Christ. An encounter between a certain ruler and our father Jesus. And this ruler had just one request, not two, just one. Asked him, saying, good teacher, take note, he said what? Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? One request. One. This ruler wanted to inherit eternal life. Is that your desired outcome? Are you in agreement with this ruler on eternal life? If yes, you follow attentively. Remember he called him good teacher. And our father reacted, why do you call me good teacher? In other words, this ruler, he had good understanding of what makes someone good and what makes someone bad. So he was able to see those things in the life of our father, Jesus. And through these things, he would qualify him as a good teacher. He called him a good teacher. So outstanding. Good teacher. So Jesus said to him, No one is good, so that one is God. Verse 20. Thank you, Lord. You know the commandments. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witnesses. Honor your father and your mother. All this, the ruler said, I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Look at me. It means Jesus Christ confirmed that truly what he said was true. That this ruler had kept all this from his youth, from when he was a youth. <laughs> now, you begin to picture this ruler. Even though the ruler missed it at the end, but he missed it only because of one thing. We'll, we'll see that. But we see him so outstanding. Look at me, child of God. Can you open your mouth here and now and say yes, as this ruler, that all these things I have kept from my youth? Adultery, murder, 
stealing, lying, bearing false witness, honoring your father and mother. Who can say that? We can see that this, this ruler was at government level, was very, very far in the things of the Lord. He had gone very far in the things of the Lord. And Jesus confirmed by saying yes. He acknowledged. And that's why Jesus told him, but you still lack one thing. One thing. It means there was one thing lacking. Yes, he had done all these things. But so many persons are still battling with this today. So many persons are still far away from this ruler. Very far. Are you the one that is still battling with adultery? Murder, stealing, lying, false witness. It is time for adjustments. Time for adjustments, child of God. Time for adjustments. Jesus is on the way. He will soon arrive. The time to make adjustment is now. These are the things he's pointing to us to adjust. Do you truly honor your father and mother? Do you still bear false witness? Do you steal? Do you lie? Do you murder? There are many murderers today, even in church. To murder somebody must not be with a gun, with a knife. With your words. You have murdered so many, you might have murdered so many persons with your mouth. With your mouth. And your record in his book, there, a number of persons. But you are saying you have never handed a life, you have never handed a gun. No, with your mouth. With the actions you have taken, you went and told a lie. And that lie, they went and evicted a whole, a widow and with children, and they seized the house and so on. You have murdered the entire family. You have murdered that widow and children. Because of a million, because of money. It is time to make adjustment, child of God. Time for adjustment has come. You need to go back and return all the things you have and you are keeping. Return. Those things that you are sitting on as the head of the family, they are not yours. They belong to the family. If you have sold, you have to go and return it back to the family. You return the money. Forsake all those things. That is the that is the decision. That is the principle. Forsake them all and follow me. If you don't forsake them, you cannot follow him. You cannot be a disciple. Elisha first, he, he, he let go all those things and he followed Elijah. Elijah did the same thing. You must forsake all those things and follow him. Oh. Are you, we still, are you still battling with these things? These are the things we have to adjust, child of God. May we rise up for his glory. Examine your life. Look at bearing false witness. Examine your life. Look at your Christian journey. In line of false witness. In line of murder. In line of honoring your father and mother. Some of us quarrel. Some of us even shout at our parents. Some of us we even we stretch our hand to, to hit our parents. Some of us even shout. You, you quarrel with your mother. Quarrel with your father. 
Examine a child of God. As you examine him, you find place where just men begin to cry to him, Father, I have fallen here. I desire to adjust, O Lord. I bless you for today. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, for one thing, but for one thing, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute And do what? Answer me. To who? To the poor. You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven. And. Tell your neighbor, and. <laughs> and. It means if you don't do it, and can never come. And come follow me the condition to follow me to go to where I am is to do what to where I'm going to to spend attention with me is to do what distribute all that you have to who to the poor not to those who will give you back not to those who will come and also bless you tomorrow Give to the poor, those who are helpless. Not just giving. Because so many of us, what we do is that we give to the one that will give us tomorrow. You are joking. You are joking. So many of us, we forgot all our family members. You are giving only to family members. You are joking. He said, give to the poor. Those who are extremely poor, they don't have means to even put food on the table. Give to them. When you do that, then you can come and follow me. And that is what the devil has used today to sweep many in this world towards his kingdom. Many in the world today are focused on the treasures of this world. Money, car, house, land, every, every day and night. That's the focus. You jump out of the bed. The next minute, you are even praying, Father, today, let my blessings be. Let my blessings be. Let my blessings be. Some person don't even thank him in the morning. They just get up in the morning. It's petition. It's petition. Petition. There is no prayer request I've removed here from the prayer request box. That I say, man of God, join me to thank this God. To celebrate this God. No. You come here, there is prayer request box and there is thanksgiving box. You go to prayer request box, it's always crowded. I always carry a handful of envelope. But you, I go to thanks offering box, even a dying you will not see inside. It says, sell them. That's what you lack. One thing. It means our Lord had examined this man and saw that truly this man lacked just one thing. How many do you lack, child of God? You see how this man was so outstanding. He lacked just one thing and he missed heaven because of that one thing. This man, this rich ruler, missed heaven just because of one thing. And that one thing is to offer his treasures to who? To the poor. He failed to do that and he missed heaven. He missed eternal life. One thing, one. How many do you lack? You still lack one thing. How many do you lack, child of God? Be sincere with your father. How many do you lack? He told him, good Good shepherd, I have kept all this since my youth. All this I have done, all. I have not murdered, I have not told lies, 
I have not I have honored my father and mother. I have still no, I'm not there. All these things I have kept them. And the Lord said, Yes, but you still lack one thing. You see how outstanding he was. But he missed heaven because of this one thing. How many do you lack, child of God? How many? This he became very sorrowful. You're not here. When this ruler had this, he became very sorrowful. He became very sorrowful. Why? Why? Because he was very rich. He said, ah, so if I give all these things now, will I not also become poor? So I'll also be like one of them. That's why our master said, see, where, where, where you are, your possessions are, that's where your heart is. You cannot say your heart is with the Lord when you are focused on the things of this world. He became very sorrowful. And that was the end of his story. It means he rejected. He did not come out powerfully to say, this I have done this time. Are you there? This I have done did not come out again. And even the request to do it, mm -mm. he became very sorrowful and left quietly. And because of these riches, he missed heaven. He missed it. One thing only. The treasures you have, if you are not careful, those treasures will guarantee your hellfire. That is the same thing he told us in Luke 14 33. He said, Forsake all that you have if you desire to be my disciple. If you desire to be my disciple. It's time for adjustments, child of God. If you take it for a joke, if you take it that you still have, a, you have more time, the days ahead are still good, surprises may come your way. That's why it says, if you get his word, do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart, child of God. I encourage you to begin to make adjustments right now. He's a faithful God. Make adjustments right now, child of God. Start crying to him. Make adjustments. Make adjustments. He missed it because of one thing. One thing. One thing, the riches, the treasures of this world. What will make you miss eternal life, child of God? This rich man missed eternal life because of one thing. What will make you miss eternal life? Because of greed, because of greed, because of greed, he missed eternal life. He didn't want to share with those who are poor. Will you also miss eternal life because of greed? Are you the one who is also greedy? Your money is only for you and children and family. You don't care about orphans. You don't care about widows. You don't care about the poor. Make adjustment, child of God. Are you the one who is self-centered? Are you the one who comes to church and sleep in church during service? Sleep in church. Your own place of rest is church during service. Make adjustments. If you fail to make adjustments, it may be too late. 
You come to church and sleep every day and go back, candidate of her fire. You will never see his kingdom. Are you there, somebody? The Lord is good. Time for adjustment is now. Are you still smoking? Are you still taking alcohol? Adjustment, child of God. The time to make adjustment is now. Do you still keep wrong company? Too busy to work for God? You have become too busy. Your schedule is too busy. That God does not have space again. Each time they call you, I don't have time. I don't have time. It is not because you don't have time. It is because you don't have time for something. Not because you don't have time. Because you don't have time for God. Not that because you don't have time. You have time to do your own work. Not so. To make money for yourself. Not for God. So you should not say you don't have time. You don't have time to do but that assignment for God. No, no, you don't have time. Are you that one? Child of God, make adjustments. Too busy. Can you remember when you alone, Larry, pick up your Bible and pray and say, I am going for evangelism? Can you still remember as a family when husband and wife prayed together, knelt down and cried to God, Father, lead us, we are going for evangelism. And you left the house, father, father, uh, 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 husband and wife, maybe with the children, and you are going for evangelism. Family evangelism, can you still remember when you did that? Are you ready for eternal life? Time for adjustment has come, child of God. It is time for adjustment. Are you that one that comes late to church always? Always late in church. But for other meetings, but only for church meetings, you come late. When they program you at the end of embassy, you go there and stay there for two hours before they even open their doors. But in church, you come you more than two hours late. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, stop joking with your life. Do you know that you are joking with the one that holds the keys to your life? Ask your neighbor. Stop joking with your life. Do you know that you can come late to church and that appointment that you have on Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, he can stop you and that you will not go to that appointment and you will not even see that day? Do you know that? Remember the rich man had gathered and he said it was time for enjoyment. And that same night, the Lord said, you fool, come over. Are you there, somebody? All that he had mounted in his warehouse, he did not see it the following day. The following day. The following day. You will run to your father. Your father won't help you. You will run to your pastor. Your pastor won't help you. You will run to your neighbor. Your neighbor won't help you. On that day, there will be no hiding place. You are a special person, child of God. If you are here this Sunday to receive this special package, it's because you are a special person. The Lord had mandated this so that you will make changes in life and turn around and God's blessing will locate you and enjoy eternity with him. If there is something you must tell him right now, is that Father, I bless you. I am a special person for you making me to be here this day to receive this special package. I thank you, Lord, for I am a special person. You are a special person to receive a special package from the Lord. Time for adjustments. Time for adjustment, child of God. Time for adjustments. 
Are you a barrier to others, child of God? Are you a stumbling block to others? Are you a stumbling block? How many persons have you put obstacles on their way? Just men has come. Are you that one that cannot easily forgive? Things of 1950, you still have them, you are hard fresh. Things that happened 10 years ago, your heart is hardened. And sometimes when they say, let go, you say, this one, no, I will not, I will not. A just child of God. Time to make adjustment has come. Are you that one that grumbles, that murmur? When being given assignments, you receive divine instruction, you murmur, you grumble. Are you that one child of God? It is time for adjustments. Are you that one that always desire what belongs to others? When you see another person celebrating, you say, hey, I wish I were the one. Jealousy. You go to a wedding, you look at somebody getting married, you say, hey, well, eh? so that person does not deserve that blessing, it's you. Always you. When they are sharing, when they remove something and they are putting somebody's plate, you look at the place, hey, I wish I was the one. I wish that plate was my plate. Good things are only for you. Eh? And when you get there, you say, give me the type that you gave that sister. Give me, put what you put to that brother, that brother. Make adjustments, child of God. Jesus is on the way. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is on the way. He will soon be around. Make adjustments, child of God. Make adjustments. Are you that one that responds to hatred with hatred? You respond to hatred with hatred. They hate you because they hate you, you hate them too. Because they reject you, you reject them too. Are you that one? No, child of God. Are you that one that reacts poorly when you are being badly treated? When they push you to an uncomfortable zone, how do you react? Do you insult? What comes out of my mouth? Are you the one when they do what you don't like? How do you react? How do you react, child of God? Do you burst out? Are you the one when, when, they, when they push you to an uncomfortable zone? You say, ah, if not that I have surrendered, I would have, eh? I, I would have, I would have completed for me now. You know what you used to say. <laughs> Help me out. You know. <laughs> eh? I would have dealt with you now. Eh? <laughs> If not, if not, it is because you have not, you don't even know Christ. That's why you are making that statement. If not, if not, I am, if not, I am born again. I would have showed you my red color. Eh? You, you don't even know Christ. Eh? Because if you know Christ, you know that they did that to him first. And he, he was very humble. He instead said, bless them for they don't know what they are, are doing. I hear yourself now. See, I would have showed you my recall. It means that inside you, your recall is inside. Uh -huh, it's inside. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are you there? And what is preventing you from coming out is what? Is remorse. Remorse. It's not genuine repentance. Remorse. If not, I would have shown you my recall. When there is genuine repentance, that kind of confession will not come out. Amen. You are. Time for adjustment 
has come. It's time for adjustments. Are you there, somebody? The Lord is good. How do you react when there is no money in your wallet? How do you react when there is no money in your account? When you are not sure of bread tomorrow? How do you react when you are very hungry and there is nothing to eat? You have no penny to buy anything to eat. There is nothing. How do you react? Like a white dog? Anyone that parks, uh, pass by you, you bite. Nang. Nang. Your neighbor will say, sister, say, don't, don't, don't sister me. Don't sister me. Is it food that I'm, I'm, I'm looking for now? No, neighbor. Time for adjustment has come. It is time to make adjustments. We don't need to react like that anymore. The time for adjustment is here. The Lord is good. It's time. Are you that one that gave up? That gives up easily? Because of one challenge? Because of one problem? You say, no, you are no longer interested. You surrender. Are you that one? Are you that one because of barrier, because of challenge? You say, no, you are tired. You give up. No, child of God, make adjustments. Elijah has just proven to us. He continued. He didn't give up. He continued. And we see the hand of God upon his life. The Lord is good. I may not have touched touch your case or touch everything for the glory of God as inspired by the Holy Spirit but child of God my plea for you this morning is that you create quality time out of your schedule create time for retreats and have an encounter with the Lord those that you cannot uncover let the Lord uncover them for you and you cry to him father help me adjust them all if you leave out one you can miss eternal life as the ruler missed eternal life because of one just one so it's a season it's a time that we have to be very very careful we have to be diligent in our walk with the lord diligent that we don't leave out one 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 can usher us to hell fire. We have to be. Look at me. His grace is sufficient for you to make all adjustments. Can I hear amen to that? Can I hear an amen that is alive? Brother Noah made all necessary adjustments in his life. He was here as we are today. He made all adjustments. He let go the things of the world and he focused on the Lord. He followed Jesus. And when the Lord made the decision to destroy this world because of wickedness, God found favor in him, Noah. And because he was a man after God's heart, working for God, he found favor in him. He spent his life working for God. And we see how he ended. Do you know how many years Noah spent only constructing the ark? 100 years. 100 years. Good years. That Noah spent working on the ark. Every day. Every day on the ark. How many years have you spent 
working for God. He had forsaken the world and he spent his life working for God. In spite the insult, in spite the name calling, in spite the persecution, this is your God that you are calling. When will he come? Uh, when will he come? Uh, since you started talking about this, your God, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when will he come? As many are also persecuting us today. That every day you say he's coming. When will he come? He will come like a thief. He will come like this rain this morning. He will come like a thief. He will come unexpected. Rain is even better. Sometimes the cloud will show signs. Maybe some wind will show signs. He said he will come like a thief. Nobody knows the hour. Nobody knows the day. But Noah kept focus. He kept focus. And when that day finally arrived, many surprises were there. They were swept by water. They cried out to Noah, but there was no way. It was too late. It was too late. If you want to enjoy the way Noah enjoyed an encounter with the Lord, make adjustments. Make adjustments, child of God. Make all adjustments. When you go home, take your time, sit and read Genesis 6. Genesis chapter number 6. And you will uncover you, you, why, why, why God destroyed, destroyed the world. Soon he will be around. It is time to make adjustments. How many years can you boast that you have spent working for the Lord? Even if it's about the day and night, working for themselves. Look at even what they get, the money that they make. How much do they give to God? How much? Do they even see it? Psalms number 127. Unless the Lord is involved, whatever you do, you do that in, in vain you will rise, in vain you will return. Make adjust. Make adjustment, child of God. The time to make adjustment is now. If you desire to be honored as Noah made adjustments and focus on the kingdom of God and he was heavy duty honored. He will do the same for you in Jesus' name. If you make adjustments, you are sure in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, brother David. Made adjustments throughout his life. He made adjustments. He made many adjustments. As a young man, he made adjustments and he honored his father and mother. He honored Je Jesse to the letter. And that's why, as the youngest in the house, he was the one on the hill alone with sheep. He did not quarrel with his father, Jesse, that why would you allow me to be on the hill alone? He was there a alone. Remember, he fought the bear alone. He fought the lion alone, on the hill alone. He adjusted, he made adjustments and focused on the Lord. And the Lord saw that in heaven and made adjustments adjusted David's life from being a shepherd on the hill with sheep to what? A great king over his own. If you go making adjustments today because you want blessing, God will allow you to prove yourself. You must prove yourself. God made adjustments and David was raised to a great king. And even as a great king, David made adjustments. He made errors. He went to God. He made adjustments. You can see Psalm 51. He cried to God. He made adjustments. When he had fallen, he cried to God. And made adjustments. 
time to rise and talk with God. It is time to cry out as he did. It is time to make what? Adjustments. You adjust your life. You adjust your Christian journey. Are you still there? Do you want to be celebrated as David was? Respond with what? Adjustment. Time for adjustment has come, child of God. If you want to be raised as he was, make adjustments. In Jesus' name. The Lord is good. May we rise for the glory of Jesus. You may not be David. You may not be Noah. But you may be Peter. Peter also made adjustments. Remember, the first adjustment he made was to abandon his fishing business and follow Christ. He forced, forsaken all that he had and followed Christ. Even as an apostle of Christ, he still made adjustments. One outstanding adjustment he made when he had denied Christ three times. He made adjustment. He started crying, weeping. He adjusted. Look up to Jesus right away. You know yourself. Begin to cry for him. Start the process right now. So as you go, you will continue to make adjustments. It is time to cry for yourself. Make adjustments. Jesus loves you. That's why he came. Now you may not only have life, but have life in fullness. If you desire eternal life, start the adjustment process right now. Begin to cry out for those you, you can remember right now. Make a sincere decision before God. Enter in and cover them with God. Go deeper with him. Cry to him, Father. Here I am. I am that sword that has lost flavor. But I know in you there is power to make me a practical instrument for use. That's why you allow me to be here this morning. Don't worry about the person that brought you here. Worry about yourself and Jesus. This may be the message that you needed in life to transform your entire life. When you make adjustments, God too will make adjustments in heaven. As he did to David. As he did to Noah, as he did to Peter, and many more. They were here as we are today. Lord, make me a practical instrument for use. Daddy, use me. Oh, 
Lord. Go ahead, talk with him. Go deeper. Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Study, use me, oh Lord. Celebrate him. If you have not truly given your life to Jesus, the time to open your heart and surrender is right now. So that he will help you do all the adjustments. Take a stand in Christ. Step in him. Be in him. Make a decision to be in him right now. Karebo Shanda Karababa. Be in him. He's calling you son, he's calling you daughter. Don't think you are not good enough to be in him. Just enter, step in Christ the way you are. He's ready to receive you. He's ready to wash you to be as white as snow. He's ready. He's abundantly able. Oh, use me, oh Lord. Father, make us. Lord, use us, oh Lord. Father, Jesus. Father, that's my confession. That's my standpoint with you. That's my prayer, oh Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Transform me. Turn me around. Be a practical instrument for use. I am ready, Lord. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready, I am ready Lord. I am ready, Lord. I am ready, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Father. I say yes, Lord. I say yes from today, I will live for you. I say if yes from today, I will do all necessary adjustments. I say yes from today, oh Lord. I'll be watchful. I'll be diligent to live for you thank you father thank you lord lift your hands to heaven i say yes oh my lord i say yes oh oh my lord i say yes My Lord, I say yes. Oh, my Lord, I say yes. I will live for you. I will do your will. I surrender to you every second of my life into your hands. I say yes. I will go and do all adjustments. Kerebora barakanda bariki busakara baba baba. Say yeah. Oh, oh my Lord. I say yes to eternal life, Daddy. Tell him that I say yes, Lord. My focus, my desire is eternal life. Oh, 
depart from your children so that together we can guarantee eternal life how awesome would that day be when we fellowship there when we see one another or we celebrating together how marvelous it shall be when we look at one another rejoicing that we made it at last thank you Lord Jesus for doing it by day by night in jesus name we have prayed 